In this video, I'll be explaining how to perform an attribute join in QGIS using a key field. Uh, the data that I'm going to use is this spreadsheet of 2016 presidential election results from Thurston County. This has been saved as a comma separated value file or CSV file. So if you were to open it in a program like Notepad, you would see um, just the text data like this. Uh, this is a very interchangeable format that's often used for uh, sharing tables. So I'm going to add that into the GIS and then I have a shape file of uh, Thurston County voting precincts. So let's add that uh, shape file first of all. That's going to be using uh, vector data. So I, I click the data source manager here and then vector and uh, we'll add those. I'm going to make sure I add the shape file. So I have the SHP extension. Make sure you get the one that's the SHP file type. So there's our voting precincts. Notice that right now there are no results on there. So if I open the attribute table, uh, it gives the name of the precinct and some other stuff, but it doesn't tell any of the election results. So that's why I want to join on that other table. Uh, so to get the table of results, I'm going to open the data source manager again and this time choose delimited text. This is how you add CSV files. And I'm going to browse to that CSV of Thurston results. Uh, notice that down here it was able to detect my table. It's showing a little preview of the data. Uh, something that you have to do is uh, expand geometry definition and choose no geometry. So this table doesn't have any points or anything like that. It's just data. So we can add it in that way. And we could preview it here just if we right click and we want to open the attribute table. Uh, we can see that table of data. And also notice that we have the precinct name here. So this is going to be our key field because it's the field that exists in both tables. And if you have the same field in both tables, you can join those tables together. So um, we're going to apply the join onto the Thurston voting precincts shapefile by right clicking and choosing properties. And then we'll click on joins right here and hit the plus to add a new join. And it's guessing that we want to join on Thurston results, which is correct. And now we have to indicate the key field in both tables. In both tables, that field is called name. That's the one field they have in common. Um, you'd have to be careful here because if any precincts had a duplicate name, you could wind up with problems. Um, but in our case, uh, these names are all unique in Thurston County. Now, there is one thing I'm going to change here. I'm going to check this box to uh, change the field name pre prefix. All the fields that come in from that join on table are going to be prefixed with this big long thing. That's a problem when I save this out as a new shapefile because shapefiles have a limit on their field size. And if I have this big long name, it's going to truncate the field name. And I won't be able to see, for example, uh, which column holds Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or uh, Gary Johnson. Instead, it'll just say Thurston R1, Thurston R2, Thurston R3. So um, I like to get rid of this if I'm going to export out as a new shapefile. So click OK and uh, we'll click OK again. Now, nothing has changed in the display, but if we're to look at the attribute table here, we should now see that our precincts have a lot of more data in them, including all these candidates. Now, notice some precincts in the shapefile did not pick up any data. Those must have been records that were missing in our original results table. Um, but most of them do have uh, results. And we could do things now like sort them. We could see which one Clinton has the most votes in, for example, and look all the way across. And then later we could go deal with why this table didn't include results for certain precincts. Maybe nobody voted there, nobody lives there, or maybe the um, shapefile was from an older election year where a few precincts changed. I'm not going to worry about that too much here. What I do want to mention is that this join is not permanent, so I did not change uh, this underlying shapefile, and if I want to save out a copy of this with that join, I need to right click and choose export, save features as and now I can designate a file name of where to save that thing so I can call this uh, Thurston precincts with 2016 results and make sure I save it uh, if I want I could change the coordinate system uh, there are some great options for that uh, I'm just gonna click OK here and take the defaults 
And now it made me a new shape file that is permanent that uh, where these results are baked in. Um, and I could just check that by looking at the attribute table again and going across and noting that I've got all these different candidates. Now see how the field name was truncated because in a shape file your field lengths are limited. So thankfully I didn't have that big long prefix on there and I'm able to still discern who the candidate was by looking at this name. Uh, so now I've uh, added my table, added my shapefile, I joined the table onto the shapefile, and then I exported out a new shapefile that's got that join uh, basically made permanent or baked into it so that I can use the data set later.